All right, everyone, you saw the thumbnail. There she is, the old Envoy, the 06 that I picked up oh, a few months back, and I'm trying to get it back on the road. Just about done with it. Right now, we're dealing with some heater issues. We don't have a lot of heat on the inside, and I did a video on a Trailblazer where we had replaced the thermostat control. It's all one unit. And basically, what you got to do, uh, you got to take off some stuff here. You got to take off uh, the alternator and get that computer out of the way, but we're going to pull it in the garage and see if we can attempt this tonight. The problem is the heater just doesn't get hot. Uh, the engine does not get up to temperature. Let's go inside real quick here and check this out. All right, so the engine's been running 25 or 30 minutes, and I've been trying to get the temperature up. You can see the temperature gauge there. It's just, it's not even close to 200. It should have at least 195 to 200 degree thermostat in it, roughly. And you can see on the computer here, it's only showing 149 degrees uh, for the temperature. I've seen it go up to about 180 on a warm day, and that's about it. So this is the biggest problem we've got right now. So um, I want to go ahead and try to get this in. I thought I'd do a little video here and see, we'll see if it's any different than the Trailblazer. Probably not a whole lot of difference, but uh something here i wanted to really get fixed other than that everything else seems to be okay although i think i need an alternator because when i let up on the throttle watch those lights dim <laughs> kind of flicker a little bit there that's not i don't think it's supposed to do that so uh yeah so that's about it let's see we got 149 degrees that's a well up to 151 so but anyway that's the problem very common issue on these uh, Envoys, Trailblazers, uh, Trailblazers, uh, the 4.2 uh, uh, inline six cylinder engine. So uh, let's get out there and uh, pull it in the garage here and see if we can go ahead and tear into this and all that good stuff. Hey, let me know where you're watching from right now. All right, and so it begins. We're inside in the garage because it beats being outside right now. It's kind of cold. So what I'm going to do, uh, I've got the antifreeze kind of draining out. So you're going to hear a little noise. Uh, there's no pet cock on the bottom of these. Uh, unfortunately, underneath of these... Uh, radiators so i just kind of loosened up the hose took the clamp off and slid the hose back far enough just enough to get the water the antifreeze kind of flowing out of there i think you can see it there the hose is still on but it's coming up pretty good because if you take that hose off all at once you're going to have a big old mess and it also helps to take off your cap up there so we're going to let that drain now what we're going to be replacing is right down under this alternator and this computer. This is how I'm going to do it. You could do it any way you want, but I'm taking this battery out of the way. We're going to be pulling this computer out of here. There's just some bolts here and some plugs. Get this mess out of the way. Eventually loosen up this belt uh, on the tensioner. Slide it off the alternator. Get this bracket off. And eventually probably just pull this alternator out of here. Now you could probably get in there and change it, but I'll tell you what. You're going to have cuts all over your arms. You're going to be cussing. If you drop anything, you're going to be uh, having a hard time getting any of your tools out of there. So this is why I'm doing the extra steps here, just to give myself a lot of room to get in here. So this is how I'm going to do it. So the first thing I've got here, I've got the battery. I'm going to be taking it out. i got this bracket just about ready to come out. i got to take one bolt here out. Got the nut and bolt off back there. We'll unhook these cables. And we'll pull this out get it off to the side. All right, off comes that little tiny nut. You have to use a little deep well socket there to get that off there. And now we'll put this out of the way. Interesting little thing. Now let's grab this battery and get it out of there. All right, got these little 8 millimeter bolts out there. Put that off the side. And out comes our battery. And I think this battery was uh, 2018. May. Okay. So let's five-year battery so i'm gonna well, that's right five years so maybe it'll last all right let's get this out of here hopefully it'll last me but it seems like it's in pretty good shape all right so i've got two of these connectors loose what you gotta do is flip up these little guys here if you flip them all the way up like that this will release these out of the pens this first one has a little wiring harness down here that's into this plastic connector just take your screwdriver and pop it out this one's about out and this one here is just about ready to come out so i gotta push this up more like that and that should let me take this off of the computer just like that and now we'll just kind of push them out of the way try not to bend the wires too much but what we want to do is basically just get this out of here so for now i'm going to go ahead and take these four bolts here out on each side of this computer pop it out of this case then i can get this bracket out of the way we might actually have enough room to get in there and actually replace that but we'll see we won't get too far ahead of ourselves so let me go ahead and get this out. These are, I believe, 
either 12 or 10. I have to have a two deep well sockets on the bottom for this one and this one. And these here are just regular sockets. Get those out. All right, I got a little screwdriver behind there. We'll pop this out of the way. And ta da! That's all it is. Hmm. The only issue I have is I replaced the oxygen sensor. Number one, uh, number one oxygen sensor on side one. And it says that I have a uh, O2 sensor problem with the heater circuit. Well, on the OBD2 code reader, it shows that I'm getting voltage and all that good stuff and going to the computer, but the computer is showing the check engine light on for that, so I don't know what's going on. That's something later I'll worry about. And I did do a quick video on that. Not a quick video, but I kind of touched on that earlier. The problem I was having when I first bought the vehicle, but now we'll go ahead and get this bracket out of the way here. All right, one plastic bracket now out, and now we're going to get this metal one out here. A couple of bolts there. Shouldn't be too bad. Okay, I think you can kind of see this. Uh, the next thing I wanted to do here is go ahead and get this fuel line out of the way. There's a little bracket here. Just kind of pop this off, and you'll need one of these uh, tools here. Um, you can get these for like six dollars. You know, this is here. This I think this one here is probably a so much dirt on it, I can't read it, but anyway, these are just a uh, quick disconnect uh, tool. Now there is a little piece right here, take your screwdriver, just pop this out right here, because we don't want to flex this line too much, and slowly pull this off, get the fuel pressure out, and you can see I have no hardly any fuel pressure there, and we'll just kind of lift it up out of the way for now, and just kind of somehow probably take a bungee cord and just pull this up like this, because there's the bracket we want to take out. And that's actually laying on there, a little hole there. And I'll say one little cable here, wire will pop off. And we've got a couple bolts here, and this bracket should come out. So don't forget that, and don't flex this line too much. All right, so here's where we stand. We've got this bracket ready to come out. There's one bolt like this. It's a little 10 millimeter. You literally have to get a little short extension, and maybe a little deep hole like this, something kind of small, and get in there. But there's some wiring harnesses under here. you got to split them apart and feel for that bolt and get your socket on it. Then when you get the socket out here, you can get your ratchet on it and get it off. But this thing took me probably 15 minutes just to get it out. And you have to unhook some of these other, you know, harnesses here, these little clips and stuff, get them out. And now you can see if I unhook this guy right here, this whole piece will come out. And right there you can see our uh, thermostat housing. So we might not have to take the alternator off, but we're not quite there yet. So let me go ahead and get this rest of the way out. You're going to have to have a little patience with this, all because of that one bolt on the bottom. All right, so there we go. I tell you what, there's probably seven harnesses connected on this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It makes it a challenge getting this out. But some of them you can just pop them out of the clip. Some of them you can just push them right out of their holes. So it depends on what you want to do there. So there's that. And... Uh, now we have so much more room in here, and let me grab the camera and show you what's going on. I have to adjust this a little bit, sorry about that. And uh, right there is our thermostat housing, it looks like we're still going to have to take the alternator out because it's down pretty low, below that alternator. No problem, we'll just take that out and make our job a little bit easier. And I was telling you earlier about, you know, taking all this stuff out of the way will make it easier. I'm taking stuff out of the way and I'm wearing long sleeve shirts, but look at the marks I have on my arm already. So this is why you got to take a lot of stuff out of the way. Can you imagine trying to do that with all this stuff in? There's probably no way you could do it. All right, so I've got the belt off. There's a tensioner right there. We just put a regular old socket to reach travel on it. Bend it down like this and let it release. Now when it releases, be careful. Don't let it come back here and hit your uh, oil sending unit here. This thing here, I've seen guys snap this off and this thing will come back. So you kind of got to get this like this push down then when you release it it'll come back a little bit more because the belt's off and you don't want to come back and hit that so just beware and like i said we got the belt off it's just kind of hanging down there next thing i went ahead and took this bracket off you got three bolts here these are 15 and there's a little bolt right here that holds this uh, air conditioning hose on it goes on the front here got that out of the way and now i've gone ahead and started to loosen up the most difficult bolt on the bottom of this alternator but first what i did Went back here, unhooked this little 8 millimeter, uh, 10 millimeter bolt, took out the plug right there. And the only thing that holds this alternator in 
it's basically two bolts here and one on the bottom the one on the bottom is a pain to get to so what you got to do is get you just a 15 wrench like this get it on there but the problem is they got this air conditioning hose right almost up against it so stick the wrench in between the fan blades of the fan and kind of stick this on her like this and once you get it on there you don't have a lot of leverage not a lot of room but what you can do is take just maybe a pipe like this put it on the uh, wrench like that and tap it a few times enough to break it loose and once it breaks loose you can take your wrench back off and get your ratcheting wrench like I have over there I have a set of those ones that go you go you can get in there and, and take it out it's painful it's slow but it's you know fairly doable that's how you get that bolt out these two up here are real easy I take those out then that alternator will come out now I was thinking earlier if you just took this out you could probably leave this brace this bracket stuff in here and uh, probably get in here and work around but if you took this alternator out it would make it a little bit easier to get into this bottom bolt that I was telling you about earlier on this bracket you can actually probably just get your hand back in here for the wrench once this alternator is out and probably take that out a little bit easier but uh, you know it's up to you whatever you want to do but this alternator is about ready to come out so we've actually crossed over the mold hill here and we're headed down into the valley for our job it's going to be a lot easier at this point. So let me go ahead and get this bolt out on the bottom and get these two out here out and we'll pull this alternator out. Alright, so I just about got that bolt all the way out. Now the problem you get into, if you get it too far out, see how the wrench is kind of hung up there? That bolt is right up against that hose. You might have to wiggle that hose and try to get your wrench back out like this. So I'm going to have to use both hands and push back slightly on that hose. I'll probably back that bolt out too far, but... I'll get my wrench off there so you kind of kind of watch that let me zoom in just a little bit for you there if you can kind of see that maybe i don't know try this again here see how close that bolt is up against that hose so why they designed it that way i have no clue all right so i got all the bolts loose the bottom one is out as far as i can get it and there's this one let's get these out of the way this one out of the way and i should be able to pull this either forward or backwards probably forward lift it up out of here like this and hopefully not knock the camera over in the meantime so I'm probably going to have to move the camera out of the way but anyway it's ready to come out so there's the alternator of course I need another one listen to this thing I don't think it's supposed to be making any noise so that bolt's here goes in like that let's go over here and look look at this right here this this line i mean what were they thinking i mean see how <laughs> uh but anyway when you put this alternator back in just make sure you put the bolt in like this drop it in there and you should be all right now like i said earlier if you take this alternator off um you could probably get, and get this bolt on the bracket and look what we got right there yeah our money shot. There's what we got to replace. See, a lot easier to work on now and get in there and take care of. So, uh, let's go ahead and take that out, I guess. And before we take that out, then I wanted to see what amp alternator this is. So I can replace it, but no writing whatsoever on it. But I do see some paint markings here. This has been uh, replaced. But the only marking I see on the front of this is uh, DR44G. But no amperage i don't know why they make it so difficult to figure out what the amperage is on these but nevertheless no tags or nothing like that so i guess we'll be replacing that soon the other thing i want to tell you really quick is while your belt is off check your water pump the way you check your water pump is is you grab the pulley when the belt is off and if you can see the back of this housing here if i if i move this back and forth like this with my hand grab the fan and see that hear that that water pump's getting bad, so I want to replace it also. It's easy to do, but should not have any play in it whatsoever. Back here in the back, so. Do it before summer, you know. You want your engine to run nice and cool. All right, that's just a little tip. All right, now let's hit that. Okie dokie, folkies. We've just about got this bottom mold out. Do yourself a favor. Don't break this one loose first. 
break this one loose on the bottom with your 10 millimeter and all that because when you do these will twist out really easy because if you loosen the top one then break this one loose this thing will get into a bind and get heavy and you won't be able to take the nut out the bolt like I'm taking with my two fingers here and I should be able to pull it out in a second it's a little tight right here but I think I just about got it and these are very big bolts so do not over torque these Repeat after me, do not over torque these. <laughs> this is a little 10 millimeter head. So put this here out of the way. We only got one on the top here. Let me get that one out in my ratchet there. All right, so I broke it loose there. So I'm gonna take the ratchet off the socket here and take this out like that. Get this out like that. And here we go. Ta-da! There we go. Repeat after me. Do not over torque these. Okay. And now for the money shot. We'll just kind of grab it here and break it loose. And there it is. You'll probably lose a little fluid. Maybe a cup full. And there it is. And don't even bother fighting with this clamp. We're just going to snake this whole thing up through here and bend it and unhook it. And you can see how I kind of fished it up here and just brought it up. And now we can get to this here. We don't have to fight with it. Put a little paint mark here or something so when you put your other one back on here, you kind of have a point of reference here. Then you put your clamp back on it and just drop all this back down. You don't have to worry about too much, but you can see this one here looks like, I don't know, I can't tell if it's stuck open or not, but that centerpiece is way down in there. Mine's way out there, so I don't know. But anyway, that's how you get this off. If you want to fix yours, hopefully this video will help you out. So now, go ahead and check that seal down there. There is a little seal. Check it, clean it. Everything here looks good. I don't think they gave me a seal with this one. I'll have to check. But uh, that's that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I got a seal. Okay, we're good there. And as I like to say, out with the old end and with the better. <laughs> no, no, no. Yep, there are pink marks there. We're all ready to go. We're ready to put it back in. So we'll just fish it back down our start our bolts with our fingers. Remember, we do not want to over torque those or strip them. And we'll tighten everything down accordingly. You guys can look up your own torque specs. Can't do everything for you. And uh, we'll go ahead and start putting everything back together and see how hot our heat gets. I'll go ahead and start putting this back together. Not a whole lot to see here. You guys can put it back together. You know how to, you took it apart, you can put it back together, right? So let me go ahead and put it back together here, save some time, and we'll start to wrap this video up. And boom, just like that. Check that out. It is on. It's on, baby. That top bolt, it's easy to do. What do we see here? Uh, yeah, pretty long, 10 millimeter. What you can do is just go through the firewall. The fender there, can't see it, but you can just tighten that bolt there on the bottom up a lot easier than getting up in here and fangling around and cussing and all that good stuff. So that's one way you can do it. Pretty easy to do. So I love it when a plan comes together. All right, folks, it is the next day, and I wanted to see if I can get that bracket on there uh, just by putting my hand where the alternator should be back in through here and get that bottom bolt on that bracket. And it's actually a lot easier to do it this way. So I don't know if you can see my hand up under here, but... I got that bracket back on there. It's easy to get to that way, a lot easier. Now, of course, you'll have to pull your alternator out, unbolt it, pull it out, and hook the uh, hot wire on the back of it, take the nut off, and then pull the plug out, pull the alternator out of here. Then you can get in here. So this probably do it this way. I know earlier in the video I tucked this out first, but I couldn't remember how I did it on my trailblazer. But uh, even if you want to leave that in there and change out this piece here, you can still get in here. But uh, I don't know. It's, it's whatever you want to do. But I still like having this bracket out because I can get my hand behind here and get in here and get this nut and bolt off of this uh, assembly here in case uh, I can't get through the firewall or something. But it's it, you know it's up to you. Whatever room you need to do your work. Well, you know you might want to take that off, give you a little extra room, a little more work. But hey, it's all up here. So yeah, just take your alternator off first. Then worry about this bracket if you want to take it off. Put your hand under here and get that little nut and take these two here off. And you should be good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up here and put it all back together. All right, so she's all back together. Ta-da! 
It took me about two hours to put the piece in and about maybe an hour to put it all back together. I got a new alternator coming and a new water pump a little later, but I didn't put this little bracket on because all it does is hold that on. I'm not going to be driving it, but I want to see how the temperature is going to be. We're going to start it up here in a minute. Let it warm up and see if our temperature gauge goes more than whoosh, up in the middle, not down here, maybe up here around 200 or so and see how that works out. So get the battery on here and we'll wrap this video up. All right, we're back. And uh, well, good news is I got good heat. Look where the temperature gauge is now. It's almost up to about 200, 210. And uh, on the uh, code reader here, it's about 178. But what I found out is when I bought this vehicle, they put a key in it. It only works. It only works in the ignition. It doesn't work in any of the doors or anything. So I couldn't figure out why I kept having all these other codes popping up, and I have a slew of them. And what I've realized is someone has taken this key out of another Trailblazer or GMC, grabbed the outside computer, slapped it on this vehicle, and just changed out the lock with the key, so they wouldn't have to program it and do all that. This is why I'm getting all of these codes. But other than that, I got good heat. That took care of that. So when you buy used cars at lots, you don't know what you're getting into. People put do shady things, you know. And I thought it was a little odd they only had one key that fit the ignition here. And none of them work in the door. I'm not sure if this even works. I should try it real quick. Let's see if it works. I don't even know. So there's lock, I guess. Yeah, okay, well, good, it works. So we'll start back up here, but I want to show you all the codes that I have, which is just crazy. All right, so let's read some codes here. <laughs> we got a lot of them, I'm telling, telling you right. Bank shaft, heater circuit, heater circuit, idle air, evap, camshaft over B, blah, blah, blah. It just goes on and on. The thing's idling way too low. EVAP sensor, uh, B camshaft, and you can see the check engine light is on. So that's what someone has done. These computers, you can swap them around, but they're, if they're not programmed to the vehicle for the correct calibrations, you know, your car, uh, you're, it's not going to run right. So that's what they've done. So now I'm going to have to go online and probably go on eBay and have somebody program me a computer. I could probably get another one for about $139. I've done this in the past when... Um, I had a computer problem and the computer on these envoys and trailblazers, you know Basically sits right here. Look how low this thing's idling Way too low So they what they've done they've just swapped this out with the key off another vehicle slapped it on here and, and sent this thing down the road And guess who ended up buying it? Yep. Yep. I end up with it. So but like I said it's worth fixing To me it is it's excellent shape on the inside so i don't know guys that's about the end of the video but you can see where the gauge is now it's almost 210 and our reading is not even that on the code reader um, it's probably maybe 175 80. i've seen it go to 179 or so and that's about it we'll just look at this one more time here before we uh kind of wrap this video up but in the meantime i did get the heater fixed we got good heat now and you can see the we're up to 181 now for the coolant temperature. I would think it would be, it would at least have to go up to 180, I don't know. But then again, if that computer out there is not calibrated for this vehicle, this could actually be reading 200, 210 right now. So it's one of those things. So maybe I'll do a video on that later. If you want to see it, let me know. Me swapping out these computers and getting these calibrations right and all that. I'm not sure how that's going to work with the radio, but I think once the computer is calibrated, it should still work because it does have a security light. The radio works fine, though, right now. So I'm not sure what's going on, but I think it's a computer problem because this here key that they gave me with the vehicle, the only key, and it's got a piece of tape on it. I think that's the telltale signs of we have the wrong computer on this vehicle. All right, guys, so that's it for the video. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and all that. And until my next video... I'll see you later. But man, I gotta tell you, for 230,000 miles, that it's one good sounding engine.
Unless that computer is lying. Who knows? <laughs>